Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, Online Merchandising Strategies That Lead to Profits and Growth. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by Dealer On. For anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer On, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency best known for our amazing SEO, the best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. After NADA earlier this year, we were awarded the Driving Sales Dealer Satisfaction Award for top-rated websites for an unprecedented seventh year in a row. We also took home the AWA Award for Best Websites for a third time, plus FCA and Ford announced that we're now an approved vendor. Big things are always happening over here at Dealer On. We're still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program. Do you want to know more? Yeah, you do. You can check us out at DealerOn.com. And by the way, we have an, a webinar-exclusive special offer for you. If you are a Honda, Chevy, or Toyota dealer, you can save almost $5,000 a year on the industry's best SEO. Sounds great, right? Just check yes at the end of the webinar in the survey, and we're going to make some magic happen for you. Remember, it's a webinar-only exclusive deal for our Honda, Chevy, and Toyota dealers. Thank you so much. We have a great show in store for you today. We have Russ Daniels as our presenter today. Russ Daniels is the Senior Manager of Product Marketing for HomeNet Automotive, the only provider of a unified platform that helps dealers save time and sell more cars by getting inventory out of your systems and in front of online shoppers. Russ has a strong background with inventory software products, holding leadership roles in product, marketing, training, and operations at HomeNet and Cox Automotive. His primary focus over the past few years has been working with HomeNet sales and business development teams to launch innovative merchandising and syndication product offerings for dealers and industry partners. As the Senior Manager of Product Marketing for HomeNet and Viauto, Russ works to understand core market positions as well as unmet and unrealized market needs. Russ serves as the voice of the customer to understand industry trends in the effort to launch and market product offerings that are valuable, desirable, usable, and feasible. Russ can be reached at russ.daniels at homenetauto.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. And don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. Feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends at HomeNet, ooh, they're giving away such a fun prize today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a huge HomeNet swag bag filled with all kinds of HomeNet goodies and souvenirs and tchotchkes like t-shirts and pens and mouse pads. It's a basket full of HomeNet awesomeness. I wish I was eligible to win this. I'm not. But you know what? You are. You have to be on the live broadcast to score this great prize. So stay tuned. And who knows? You could be the one walking away with this awesome prize today. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey. So fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. And we want your opinion to be heard. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation, so tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Russ Daniels at HomeNet underscore auto. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. All right, everyone, let's get started. Let's learn online merchandising strategies that lead to profits and growth. Russ Daniels, no stranger to the Dealer On webinar series. How are you, sir? Nice to have you back. Great to be back, Eliana. I'm good. Good. Thank I'm you. so glad. And I love when you bring us um, information about how to merchandise our inventory. You're actually one of the very, very few people in the space who actually comes on and talks about it. So thank you so much because it's very important. We have all these cars. we got to move that metal, baby. And who better to tell us how to do it online quicker than you. So thank you so much for being here today. We're looking forward to seeing what you have to share with us today. So why don't you tell the audience the great things we're going to be learning about today. Sounds great. Thank you, Eliana, and, and thanks again, everybody, for coming on to another Dealer On webinar. It's great to be back, and I'm really excited to be talking with you today. Um, again, she, like, like Eliana alluded to, about merchandising strategy that leads to profits and growth. Been exploring this topic for a number of years now, and 
every year try to, you know, start from the beginning and think about metrics, insights, and best practices to help dealerships uh, merchandise and distribute their inventory on the internet and quantify the value of doing that all the way down to profits and growth for your dealership. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Before I jump into that though, let's just level set as a group about consumer expectations because I think that this topic is not only relevant to uh, the conversation we're going to have today, but also just in general. And I use some visualizations here. You see them and they should be pretty, um, pretty known technologies that you use every day, at least a few of them. You go to the uh, graphics there on the right, you've got obviously Netflix and you've got Uber. With Netflix, they revolutionized kind of streaming content. And instead of you having to go to a cable provider or go to a, a, a blockbuster to rent a, rent a movie or, or watch something, um, they brought that right to your fingertips and they made it high quality. And then obviously Uber as well. They revolutionized kind of transportation um, and kind of made people think about taxi services differently. And, and they use technology to do that. And, um, you know, these are the things that are in the hands of consumers every single day. And their expectations of technology are higher than they've ever been before. So what happens, right? What happens when um, Netflix, for example, you're watching a, a TV show or a movie and all of a sudden you get kind of that uh, gray kind of swirly bar that it's buffering, right? Or if you're, you know, out with your family or friends and you want to call an Uber to get you back home or get you to the, your next destination and for some reason that Uber driver can't locate you um, and be able to pick you up quickly, what happens, right? We get frustrated. We get really frustrated that this high quality streaming service in Netflix can't give us high definition programming exactly when we want it and exactly how we want it all of the time. Same thing with Uber, right? Why can't this driver pick me up? This app is easy to use. Why is it not working? You get frustrated when you use these technologies as a consumer. And those same consumers are also going online to research inventory and their expectations are high from that as well. And they're looking for that more personalized experience and they demand high quality information and they need it faster than they ever have before. And that's how I kind of want to frame up today's conversation to bring it into our space, into the automotive landscape. Let's look at the 2018 Cox Automotive Car Buyer Journey Study. A lot of good information, and I have references at the end uh, of the presentation for, for everybody to have. But I just want to look at these two bullet points from that study that really stuck out to me about consumer expectations. Today, used car shoppers spend fewer days in market, visit fewer websites, and overall spend less time researching um, vehicles online than they did last year. Yet they also say that online research is the number one thing they do to start the car shopping process. So what does that mean? That means we need to start to think about a personalized experience, an experience that's going to grab the car shopper quicker with more appealing merchandising, with more engaging information in order to make that connection. And there's a lot of themes going on in the industry. I, I read the publications. I have a lot of conversations with dealers, with OEMs, with great partners like Dealeron, and the themes are, are pretty apparent, right? You've got margin compression going on. That's obviously something to consider. You've also got the human capital element. You're being asked to do more uh, with the same amount of people or less at your dealership. Huge trends that we need to think about. But there's another one that I want you to think about today following this webinar, and that's opportunity compression because the window is shrinking for you to make a connection with car shoppers because they're spending fewer days in market, going to fewer websites, and spending less time. Yet the high quality information you serve them on an online listing on your website or on a third party classified site is the most important thing to move them forward in the car shopping process. So a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about kind of align to these trends that we're seeing in the industry and ways that we can understand what's working with our merchandising what maybe we need to, what processes we need to put in place, and maybe some things we can even stop doing to stay more efficient. Because if you kind of zoom the lens out a little bit and think about what do we need to do as, as dealer operators in the automotive space to stay innovative and profitable, 
there's these three main bullets. They're, they're not, you know, I, I, pretty obvious and pretty straightforward. We talked about margin and top line revenue and making sure we're increasing that. We're making sure we're cutting costs and increasing our efficiency. And this third one is specific to technology. We want to adopt technology that's easy to switch, eliminates our switching costs, so we can stay in business and get back to selling and turning our inventory. So my promise to you as I go through the content today is we're going to talk about merchandising and speed to market trends that are going on today. And I'm going to be spending a lot of time talking about that because I want to help you today. But I want to also look a little bit farther out into maybe what's coming, what's on our doorstep now, but what might be coming in six to 12 months. And then we'll take a little bit of glimpse of what the far out future for merchandising and engagement and measuring speed to market could look like in our industry. And I'm going to be talking about it from personal experience, but I also want to say two promises. I promise to quantify everything I'm saying with either consumer or dealer or um, quantifiable research in terms of engagement that's going on with merchandising. And I'm also, when I'm going through these best practices, I'm going to hit one or two or all three of these kind of macro trends that you're looking at today when, I, when we think about improving our merchandising and speed to market processes. Sound good? Sounds great to me. All right, let's get started then. So like I said, I'm going to start by talking about speed to market merchandising online distribution trends that are going on now. And I'm breaking them into three sections. First, we want to talk about decreasing time to market. We want to get vehicles online faster to maximize that opportunity where car shoppers are spending less time in market, less time online. But we're also going to balance speed with quality. So we're going to talk about enhanced photo quality, what's working out there today, what's driving engagement, and then enhanced listing quality as well. We want to look beyond photos. Photos are a key piece, but there's other components of the listing that can really drive car shoppers to take the next step. And that next step is coming into your dealership test driving and purchasing that piece of inventory. I want to start with decreasing time to market because it's a big kind of question that I have when I talk to dealers and I talk to them often. And I kind of ask them, how long does it take you in the situation where you're buying a used piece of inventory from auction? How long does it take you to get that car online fully merchandised and in front of car shoppers? And the answers vary and, and they probably should vary because every dealer is a little bit different. But I wanted to kind of look across the country and kind of do some quantifiable data to really track how long that process is taking. And the results might surprise you. So what I did was I looked at around 250 dealers that buy cars at auction, and I wanted to track a couple different things. I wanted to track how long it took to get the car from the auction, and this was a mixture of both in-state and out-of-state auction purchases, and just to have that booked into your dealership management system, into your DMS. But we all know that if it's booked in your DMS, it may be inside of your inventory tool that's distributing your inventory out in front of car shoppers, but it's not fully merchandised yet. It doesn't have photos. It may not have a description or a price. So just getting it from the auction to the DMS on average takes four days. But then it took another average of seven days to fully merchandise the vehicle with a set of photos, a description, and price, and then syndicate that piece of inventory and get it in front of a car shopper. You mix that all together, and the average time to market from auction to online is 11 days. And that's data that I looked at over 90 days at the end of last year. These were benchmarks we were talking about in 2010. So over eight years, we haven't really seen a big shift or a big decrease in online speed to market. Yes, we're being more efficient, but we need to understand better how to measure that so we're getting, so we're getting cars online, maximizing those eyeballs earlier on in the process as car shoppers are spending less time in market and less time online. Now, it is costing you eyeballs, but it's costing you more than eyeballs. There's also a financial element to that. And I wanted to frame that up in the function of holding costs or carrying costs that you incur on that inventory every day before it gets online in front of car shoppers. And here's the visual for it, but I wanted to tee it up with a conversation I had uh, with a dealer from Texas. And he knew his numbers, which was great. And if you can kind of speak at this level to your numbers around speed to market and acquisition, uh, you're really off to a good start. So this dealer bought 17 cars per month at auction. And he knew, how, he knew his holding costs, it was $30 per day. 
I have a calculator that I can send to anybody that needs it. Uh, if you want to calculate your own personal holding costs, there's a couple different variables that go into that. Uh, if you want to just start with a baseline, average for NADA is, is right around $40. But this dealer knew that, and he also knew it took him eight days to get the car from auction to being fully merchandised with photos, descriptions, and price, and online in front of car shoppers. So what does that mean in terms of holding costs? He was incurring $4,000 in holding costs in his auction inventory per month before anybody saw the inventory online, which is where the process starts. So those eight days where you acquire that car, bring it to the lot, recondition it, and get it ready for, for front line, that you own that car, but that car is not for sale until it's online fully merchandised. So think about that in terms of how much holding costs am I bringing in on my inventory when nobody's even looking at it. I'm not even driving engagement, let alone lead showroom traffic, and then inevitable sales. This is even more important moving forward, everyone, because of the Fed hikes that are going on right now, interest rate hikes going on. There was two last year, uh, probably going to be two more this year. What does that mean in terms of holding costs incurred on the inventory? It's going to go up. This problem is going to get worse. So we have to figure out a way to get the car online faster and drive eyeballs, but also balance that with quality, which I'm going to talk about. So this dealer out of Texas, it was eight days. So we started to kind of game plan. How can we get this down to one to two days and kind of maximize the visibility and the eyeballs on the inventory and also not have this $4,000 in holding costs before anybody sees the inventory number staring right back at his face? So we started to kind of, you know, proverbial whiteboard stuff. And we came up with the concept of in-transit merchandising. And I kind of have a, uh, a listing here that we've, we've created to kind of demonstrate that. A couple few key points here. What he does now is he takes a photo of the vehicle at the auction. That's not always operationally uh, uh, feasible. So at least when the car comes back uh, and, and arrives at your dealership, he just shoots two to five photos really quick. It's not through recon yet. Um, it, you know, he's going to go back. He's going to shoot that full set of images. However, he's getting the actual photo of the car online in the first or second, third day at the worst, instead of eight like before. So having a real photo of the car really drives those eyeballs, and I'll talk about that in a second. But there's a couple more elements to in-transit merchandising. You also have overlays. Photo overlays are a great opportunity to kind of talk about your dealership and really tout your reputation and your brand. That's fantastic. And it's also ways to kind of talk about the story of the inventory, kind of like a, a brief version of a vehicle description. So what he does is he said more photos coming soon. I've seen other dealers stay on route to the dealership or in transit. Just another way to drive transparency to the car shopper and also make them move quicker. Hey, I really like this car. This matches my price point. This matches what I'm looking for. Same model year. Let's go in and let's get a test drive scheduled sooner rather than later. And then the last piece is the vehicle description, which is the copy that really tells the story and really helps as you get deeper as a car shopper into the vehicle details page for that piece of inventory. Even in that vehicle description, the dealer came in and said, this vehicle is en route to the dealership, call now for more information. He also buries it up and says, coming soon, call now to schedule a test drive. He leverages the fact that he's taking this in-transit merchandising or these early merchandising processes. He's actually using it as marketing messages and also as a way to drive speed to market. Pretty powerful stuff. And he's been able to see impacts in his vehicle turn starting to adopt processes like this, along with using market-based pricing, using quality providers for his website and third-party classified sites. But in-transit merchandising is getting that process started quicker. Pretty powerful stuff. Now, all of this stuff is very important, but the photo, the actual photo of the vehicle is really the star of the show and it's going to drive that engagement versus a, a stock photo, which is a representational photo of the inventory. Because what the research that I do with Cox Automotive every year tells me, stock photos are not moving the needle in terms of engagement in photos and we need to get photos online sooner. And here's a way to represent it. I would say, out of all the things I'm going to talk about today, these next two slides probably the most impactful in terms of telling the story of how you need to take photos sooner and the importance of vehicle photos to get online engagement started. So the 2018 Power of Pictures case study that I've linked at the end of this presentation, I work with Cox Automotive every year, and we look at a couple different factors, right? We look at vehicles in different photo scenarios, and you see those outlined on the left. 
And then as you go across the top, you see the, the all, new only, and used in CPO. The percentages are VDP views per listing and what the increases are in the first factor versus the second factor. So you guys can read this, and I'm not going to go through every single one. I'm just going to point out some of the, 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 the factoids that kind of resonate with me. And the top one is a single photo versus a stock photo. That goes back to the story from the dealer in Texas, how he's just taking, even if it's one photo at the auction, it's making a bigger impact than a stock photo. Look at it on the used car side. Just one real photo of the inventory gets 166% more VDP views per listing than a stock photo. Think about that for a second in terms of engagement. Also think about the, the averages that I threw out around 11 days from auction to online and the eyeballs and the opportunity you're missing out by not being able to take a short shoot or a pre-recon set of photos. But it gets worse. If you go into a multiple photo versus stock photo scenario, which I've highlighted there in green, you can see how much worse the problem is. Look at used in CPO. 349% more VDP views for vehicles with multiple photos versus a stock photo. If you let that sink in, that is a lot of engagement for multiple photos versus a stock photo. And this now, is just in one year, the difference? Yeah, what was that, Eliana? And this is just in one year, the difference? This is 2018. The next slide, I'm going to do the year-over-year -year numbers, but this, oh. is, this is kind of the end of 2017 going into 2018. Kind of a, it's like a three-year, a three-month slice. It's, 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 it's impressive stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's mind-boggling to me. And, you know, when we talk about multiple photos, I want to kind of do a, a quick sidebar and talk about how many photos should we take, right? between new and used. What does multiple photos mean? How many should multiple photos be, right? Um, so my first thing there is, it always depends on the piece of inventory. Think about the features that align to your target buyer and make sure those photos are captured. But being a part of HomeNet and Cox Automotive, I have access to just really great data that can see across a, a sample size of seven million VINs, what are the average amount of photos on a used car? And what are the average amount of photos on a new car? I'm gonna share that with you. And this, these numbers vary kind of month to month. So this is as of last week across the a majority of inventory in market today for car shoppers. Average amount of photos on used cars is 24. Average amount of photos on a new car is 17. So balance that against your current strategy. But remember, it's not always about the quantity of the photos. It's about taking the right photo that aligns your target buyer to the vehicle and how you're merchandising it. I'm going to touch on one more thing on this slide. So I want to look at multiple photos versus a single photo because I get this question a lot as well. And this is around, okay, Russ, I'm, I'm shooting pre-recon photos. Does it make sense for me to then go back and shoot a full set of photos? Does that improve VDPs? Does that increase engagement? And from our data, it does. If you look at both new and used, because there is a new, new car component to this. When a car comes off the truck and you kind of get it staged, ready to go, up, just get a little bit of cleaning before it goes forward, shoot a couple uh, photos of that before you fully clean it. And then go back and shoot a full set of photos. You see 63% VDP increases for new and about 69% on used and CPO. So it does make sense to do your pre-recon photos and then go back and shoot a multiple set of photos. Really interesting stuff. And the benefits of doing this case study is I do it year over year with the team. So we can kind of look at, okay, where are VDPs per listing in 2017 moving into 2018, which is in that percentage change column you're seeing there. But how did that change over 2016, 2017? Based on those three buckets I just gave to you. So, uh, you know, you guys can, you can see this, obviously. Let's go down to multiple photos versus a stock photo. Used in CPO, 349% more VDPs per listing, 2017 moving into 2018. That's actually an 87% increase over last year. So VDP increases on multiple photos versus a stock photo, it's getting even more significant moving forward. So what does that speak to? That speaks directly back to car shoppers spending less time in market and going to less sites, and the opportunity to engage with them is getting, a, is getting smaller, that window is shrinking, and they understand the actual photo of the car is going to make them take that next step. 
and it's getting even more significant moving forward. So I'm going to get off of photos and kind of move to, um, well, kind of photo engagement and go into photo quality. But before we do that, let's pause for a quick poll question, Eliana. Thanks, Russ. All right, audience, we got three poll questions coming at you today. First one is on your screen now. We want to know what's happening in your dealership. So if you wouldn't mind, let's take a moment and answer this first quick poll question for us today. All right? We want to know, at what point in the life cycle are you capturing photos of your cars at your dealership? Please select one of the following answers. Do you do it before reconditioning, during reconditioning, do you wait until after reconditioning, maybe you don't know, or you know what, you've hired somebody else to take photos of the cars, so you wash your hands of the whole thing, and when they're done, they're done. Okay, so once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results, and then we'll all know what, what's happening out there in uh, webinar land. We want to know at what point in the life cycle are you capturing photos of your cars? Let us know. Votes are coming in nice and fast. Audience, thank you so much. We'll leave this open for a few more seconds while you get your votes in. I, I'm imagining people are like yelling over their shoulder at somebody else saying, hey, when do we take photos of the cars? <laughs> I'm just guessing. I have no idea. So um, votes are not ready to be shown yet, so we'll just keep going. And yes, we have two more um, poll questions coming at you in a little bit, so stay tuned for that. And if you haven't gotten in any questions for Russ Daniels from HomeNet about these online merchandising strategies, hey, send those questions in. We're loving all of the audience questions, and we want to know how we can help you so that you can merchandise your cars faster and better then you're already doing it. All right, Russ, if you're ready, I'm going to close this poll and share the results. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, audience, thank you so much for all your votes. And let's see what you had to say. At what point in the life cycle are you capturing photos of your cars at your dealership? 21% of today's audience say they do it before reconditioning. Interesting. 5% of today's audience say they do it during reconditioning. The majority, however, woo, 58%, say they wait until after reconditioning is done before they take any of those photos. 11% of today's audience, they admit they don't know. And 5% of today's audience say they hired somebody else to take those photo photos for us. Whatever they do, they do. Russ, I know you talked earlier about how that one dealership started taking photos even before the car got to their dealership. Is that the right way to do it? I mean, I can imagine it would be quicker than waiting until after reconditioning, but with so many dealers out there waiting until after reconditioning, is that the right answer? I think that, you know, the, the answer is you want to uh, get the eyeballs on the inventory as quickly as possible. That equates to inventory turn, but also equates to connecting with shoppers that are spending less time in market. So I, I would encourage to think about doing photo, you know, capturing photos before reconditioning. And remember, you're not shooting 20 to 25 of them. You might, and, and there might be some things you want to clean up about that car. But if you can capture anywhere from two to five quick shots before you run those processes through, you're going to drive that engagement I just talked about sooner in the process. And then when you go back and you shoot that full set of images, which you should do, and that's great that a lot of people are doing that, you do see engagement uptick in doing that. So that, that, those are my thoughts there, Eliana. I mean, starting the, this, this part of the process, I know there's other parts, but starting this part of the process that early, can people really get, is it really realistic to go from, you know, six to eight days of conditioning down to like two or three? I think so. And, and the, the answer, you know, the, the example I gave with the dealer in, in Texas, that's just one of many, many conversations that I have with dealers that are doing the same process across the country. And I think one of the driving factors is improvements in mobile technology. So you have, everybody's got a smartphone, you got it in your pocket, or you might be texting right now, you know, while we're, while we're kind of going back and forth. And, you know, every single time they put out a new operating system or put out a new model, um, the quality of the camera gets better and better. So you just take your phone out quick as it gets delivered, snap a couple photos, 
and then you can get back to doing what you're doing. Makes a big difference. So the 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 quicker we can get the car marketed online. Okay, so he went from eight days down to two or three days. Uh, you got to put it in terms that dealers will understand. How much money did that make him? <laughs> right. Did right. we quantify that? <laughs> Yeah, well, that went down to, we, we kind of look at it the way in terms of holding costs on the inventory before anybody sees the, the car, right? Because the, the, the whole process is going to start online. So he's really helping out his margins. He had 4000 in holding costs before anybody saw the inventory. Mm -hmm. And now that he has the process down to one day, he took that from 4000 down to 600 Whoa. That's awesome. Wow, that's a huge difference. Okay. Sorry to interrupt your flow, Russ. Let's get going. <laughs> no problem. It was a great, great discussion, and, and I love having those discussions. And if we have more questions to get into the into the, the, the question box for the end, I'd love to talk more about it. Okay, let's do that. Audience, send those questions in. <laughs> great. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's stay on the photo topic, but let's get away from engagement and VDPs and data for just a second, and let's talk a little bit about quality. And let's talk about making that photo the star of the show to really increase the engagement on the VDPs per listing we were talking about. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. I see the physical kind of on the lot way of doing it. And that's, you know, putting a, a nice photo booth inside of your dealership with a nice white background and, um, you know, that really eliminates distractions and makes the car the star of the show. And there's a lot of dealers out there doing that. Not every dealership ha has the ability to do that. It's not always feasible. There's obviously investment um, components there where you may not want to make that deep investment into a photo booth. There's also the logistics component of that where you may not have physical space at your dealership to, to put a photo booth in to eliminate distractions and make the car the star of the show. So that got me thinking about what are some ways we can put technology in that's easy to adopt and makes us more efficient back to those three drivers at the beginning. And that got me thinking about leveraging technology for photo backgrounding solutions. So taking the photo, like the example on the top, extracting the vehicle and putting it into a background that eliminates distractions outside of the vehicle. Now, I wasn't always a believer in photo, in photo backgrounding solutions. I just thought, hey, let's, let's teach dealerships to take better photos. And that's the way we can get there. Um, but as I walked through it, I kind of changed my mind a little bit. Now, first, when I got into the industry about 10 years ago, um, the photo backgrounding with technology examples that you see here were not where they were then. They were putting the vehicle on the beach or on Mars and, or on the moon. That's not the way you want to do it. I'm going to tell you that right now pretty directly. Um, that's not good marketing. That's not a great way to, to have a realistic approach to your inventory. Car shoppers do not, do not take to that. However, I thought about what if we make it simple? We don't have to use these kind of, you know, verbose kind of big picture kind of crazy backgrounds. We can use one like the example on the right, which is just a, a kind of looks like a normal white background that would be inside of a dealership. If you use that, then you have that car be the star of the show. And it's kind of reflecting a little bit better into your marketing. It's more realistic. But as I said before, I wanted to quantify everything that, that I'm just talking about today. So I wanted to quantify photo backgrounding two ways, uh, both from the consumer lens. I wanted to look at appeal on backgrounded photos, and I also wanted to look at impact on, on perception to the dealership. If a car shopper knew or was tipped off that the car was a photo backgrounded car, would that impact dealer perception? Then I want to look at it in terms of increases in vehicle details page views, similar to what we looked at on the last slide. So let's start with the consumer piece. So first, buyer appeal. So when we asked consumers this back last year, we said, which photo is most appealing and would make you move forward in the car shopping process? And now you have on the right, kind of the blue boxed one is a photo backgrounded photo. We looked at a backgrounded photo with an overlay and we also looked at a non-backgrounded photo. And the blue section is very appealing or extremely appealing. You see a 15% increase in buyer appeal from the non-backgrounded photo to the backgrounded photo. I also wanted to, after they answered that question, say, if you did know this car was put on a transposed background to help you understand the details of the car and get you a better perspective on that piece of inventory, would that impact the dealer perception? And you see that it doesn't. So um, you can look at that 5% to 3%, or you can look at impact on the dealer perception, an increase of 16%, 
in terms of a non-backgrounded photo to a backgrounded photo. I think this speaks to, again, that personalized experience and car shoppers demanding high quality information quicker than before. So to be able to get all the other cars out of the background, to get the distractions out of the way and just focus on the inventory that you want to focus on as you're going through the photo stream is, is, is impactful and appealing to car shoppers and really makes them look at the dealership uh, not only in a, not in a negative light, but in a positive light. Hmm. On the quantitative side, it also has a slight impact in vehicle details page clicks. We looked at um, about 150 dealers, close, getting up to 200. Over 90 days, the, half of those dealers used photo backgrounding solutions, and half of them did not. And we looked at clicks from vehicle search results pages to vehicle details pages for backgrounded photos versus non-backgrounded photos. And we found that uh, it's a 5% increase in VDPs for back backgrounded photos versus non-backgrounded photos. So not a huge impact, uh, but, but an impact. It's, it's got a, a little bit more of an uptick. And this wasn't a backgrounded photo versus a stock photo. These were real photos of similar inventory and kind of battling for those clicks on a, on a third-party site. So really interesting. I think it also speaks to the investment. Let's see if there's technology out there that's easy to adopt, that's cost-effective, instead of making a bigger investment physically into my dealership to put a photo booth in there. Because while it does produce positive results, Let's be realistic and, and sometimes not go too deep into the, the physical investment. Use technology to, to get the uptick. So I do recommend you investigating photo backgrounding solutions, especially if you have kind of um, problematic things behind your dealership wires or other stores or gas stations right around your, your, your dealership. I've seen impacts using this technology. Let's step away from photos now for a second and look at the listing holistically. So it's not only about photos, and, and, and those are big drivers. We'll talk about videos and 360 spins in just a couple of minutes. But there's also that impact of a completed listing with options and exact color information. And again, with car shoppers spending less time online, you have less time to connect and they want that personalized experience, you want to make sure you're serving up all the right details on the inventory that make the impact on the shopper. And that's what got me talking about build data or build data attributes. Basically what that is, is installed option codes, that's color information, trim information, things that don't come off of a standard VIN explosion or a standard VIN decode. Available a lot with OEMs, a lot of technology providers are starting to integrate that into their inventory management systems. And it makes your listings better, right? It has the descriptive listing, um, and you can do that quicker, especially if you're leveraging technology. There's also SEO implications to this and ranking information as you have a more descriptive vehicle that'll match more to a kind of a long tail search that a car shopper would do. Build Data can help with that. And there's also an operational component, and that's what the chart is on the right side. I looked at uh, some various OEMs, some, some brands here, and I wanted to look at what are the exact matches on Vindicode before and after build data? Let me explain that. So when you get a VIN into an inventory management system, it doesn't always know everything on the car. It doesn't always know, um, you know exact color information. It doesn't know all of the installed options or package codes on the inventory. It doesn't always know the trim value. Um, so what do we have to do today? We have to go into our inventory management system and find out which ones don't have an exact match, and, and you click on the, the different features to get an exact style match to create that really good description. Not what you really want to be doing. You want to be getting back to selling cars and turning your inventory. So what we, and trucks are notorious for that, right? Bed length and, and other components of that truck that really make it tough to get an exact style match. So I looked at the differences. I used build data technology. We looked at those same 800,000 cars. We looked at before and after build data. And those are the increases on the right in terms of exact matches. And all of those percentages mean more efficiency at your dealership. Getting away from things that don't exactly equate to selling inventory. It's just a necessity to really create a great listing. Let technology take that on for you. Now, it's a, it's a complete listing, you're operationally efficient, but a lot of those features are also going to go down into your vehicle description, especially the installed option features. And if you bounce that up against the 2017 technology feature study, where we looked at Kelly Blue Book shoppers specifically, and we wanted to know what features really resonated with them when researching online and looking at vehicle descriptions, 
I listed the top 10 right here and I kind of categorized them into different feature categories, if you will. Now, a lot of these will come off of a standard VIN code, but not all of them will. A lot of them you need to come in and, and select the package code to really get that descriptive option in your vehicle descriptions and in your listings. So go back, look at your vehicle descriptions, look at the options you're touting on the inventory, and bounce that up against these technology features that are really driving car shoppers to take the next step. This slide kind of puts all of it together. We talked a lot about speed to market, photo engagement, photo quality, listing quality, build data. Here's a way to track it. And this is a spreadsheet that a dealer group that I talked to um, used. And, they, and I thought it was really interesting. And I kind of, like a good marketer, took it from a spreadsheet into something that looks, all, that looks polished and nice. And what this is, is this is measuring online merchandising operations. Measuring it in days, hours, and minutes. That's what those numbers look like across the entire group and then across the dealer group. This is a kind of best picture scenario that is, is hard to get to. It's a, it's, it's a little bit of extra work, but if you want to get to it, you can start to put these strategies in place, and that's what we're here to talk about. For example, you can look at dealer five in terms of their photo time to market, and you can see, okay, 13 days, 22 hours, 18 minutes to get photos on the vehicle from the time you buy it. But dealer one, it's taking five days less. So what's going on at dealer one that we can kind of move down into dealer five? What strategies can we put in place to drive down time to market? You can also see in the description time to market how that's all zero. That's all zero because they're using technology that's easy to adopt to do an auto-generated vehicle description. Just something you don't have to worry about. And you know, technology's improved a lot over the years to really create a, a pretty strong vehicle description that's, that's vehicle specific something that you don't have to, to go back and think about. You can always go back and put your own personal touch on the vehicle description, similar to taking a short set of photos and then going back and taking a full set of photos. You can do that, but let's make sure we're thinking about technology to get a description on day one so we can tell the story of the inventory. Quick section I rolled through, Eliana. Let's do another poll question. Man, I had a question about that last slide. Dealer one, he, he was taking 34 days current month time to market. Is that, is that what I'm reading? Yeah, that's the, that's the current month time to market, exactly. Yep. Um, isn't that excessive? Why would it take 34 days? Yeah, I mean, variety of factors, right? It could have been you turned a lot of inventory in the previous month and you got a lot of fresh units in. You're a little bit behind in your process kind of a good problem to have, but something to be aware of. Wow, okay, all right. Let's go to that poll question. All right, audience, sure. second poll question is on the screen now. We wanna know, how long does it take your dealership to get a car fully merchandised and ready for online advertising? Please select one of the following answers. Are you one of those dealerships that takes one to five days to get a car completely ready? Are you more like six to 10 days? Does 11 to 15 days sound more reasonable to you? <laughs> Does it take more than 15 days? Or do you really not know how long it takes your dealership to get a car fully mer merchandised and ready for online advertising? Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. And just so you know, Russ, we already have a few really wonderful questions that have come in from the audience. So audience, if you haven't gotten in your question yet for Russ Daniels, I know he's throwing so much information at us today. Um, get those questions in. We're looking forward to getting to all of your questions during the Q&A session, which is coming up after his presentation. All right. Audience was quick on this question. I think they knew the answer to this one. All right. Here we go. Audience, thank you so much for your votes. Russ, if you're ready, I'll close this poll and let's see what the audience had to say. Okay. Okay, I don't know if these are the right answers, so I know we want this to be as low as possible. So it impressed me that 27% of today's audience, more than a quarter of today's audience, say their dealership only takes one to five days to get a car fully merchandised and ready for online advertising. That's great. The majority, however, 32% of today's audience, say it takes them more like six to ten days. 18% of today's audience say, oh, hold on a second, 11 to 15 days, that's our sweet spot. 9% of today's audience 
say, yeah, we admit it takes us more than 15 days to get a car fully merchandised and ready to sell. And then the remaining 14%, they admit they don't really know how long it takes to get their cars fully merchandised and ready for online advertising. So according to you, my dear friend, Mr. Daniels, you're saying, hey, the lower you can get that number, one to five days, you're going to make more money, sell more cars, correct? That's right, Eliana. And I think from I think we're seeing kind of a correlation between the first poll question around those dealers that are shooting pr photos pre-recon mm -hmm. and the dealers that are getting cars online fully merchandised in one to five days. Because those percentages were very, very similar, actually, across those poll questions. Oh, very interesting. All right, audience, thank you so much for your votes on the second poll question. We're going to have another poll question coming at you in a little bit. So sit tight and get those questions in, if you wouldn't mind, for Russ Daniels. We're going to be getting to that Q&A session after his presentation. All right, Russ, where do we go from here? We're going to look forward from here, Eliana, and we're going to think about, okay, we talked a lot about merchandising strategies that can happen now, and we're going to still go on to, you know, we're going to talk about things that we can adopt today, but these are more trends that are starting to hit the doorstep that are going to become more and more evident um, as we kind of move forward, right? So I'm going to break those into three sections, run through them um, a little bit quicker than I, I did the first section, because again, I really wanted to make that impact uh, quicker. Uh, for everybody here on the webinar today. But let's take a step back and let's talk about social media. Well, we're going to talk about that differently. We're going to talk about merchandising and listing cars on social media and, and specifically talking about Facebook Marketplace. And, you know, a lot of things to kind of talk about here. Main pieces I want you to, to kind of take away are there's an importance to have Having a business page and a news feed where you're engaging with car shoppers, but there's also importance to listing your cars on Facebook Marketplace, which is kind of Facebook's classified site that's been around for a while, but really wasn't automotive focused until recently. And the reason it wasn't automotive focused until recently is the, the engagement wasn't there. Now it is. So if you look at the product manager from, from Facebook saying autos is one of the most popular categories on Marketplace. Millions are looking for inventory every single day on Facebook Marketplace, and there's an example on a mobile app to the left. And then there's that data on the bottom around how many uh, visits that come to uh, Facebook buy sell groups and the growth in Facebook Marketplace uh, from 2016 going into 2017. And there's been a lot of press with Facebook really trying to go deeper into automotive in terms of listing inventory. There's a lot of providers out there. They, they were using third-party classified sites and kind of using those to create the listings. They're still doing that. There's also, um, they're also starting to get feeds directly from, from various providers, um, go piping inventory photos and data directly into Facebook Marketplace. So we thought a lot about social media in terms of retargeting. We still need to think about it that way. We thought about Facebook a lot in terms of business page. Still need to think about it that way. But let's start bringing Marketplace in as well. I have a theory on this that I still want to validate, and that's, you know, social media has been around and huge in our lives for maybe 10 to 12 years now, and uh, a lot of folks that jumped on social media early, they were younger then, maybe they were in high school or early on in college, not a lot of disposable income. Now as they get older, they have full-time jobs, they've got salary jobs, and uh, their, the economy has kind of changed over the last 10 years that we've all seen, and there's a little bit more disposable income now for them to go to sites or resources that they trust like social media, to start to search for higher priced assets like cars. So something to think about. We're not talking about, obviously, in the Facebook example, sharing personal data or anything. We're just talking about the retail inventory that you want to get eyeballs on with car shoppers, a really good resource you want to do. This next one, this next section is pretty much about everything. Thing I've talked about, and that's creating that personalized experience for the car shopper and thinking about merchandising, targeting a specific buyer, kind of like a buyer persona in the marketing world that I live in, that's going to align to the product that you have, like a, like a piece of inventory in your example. And there's been a lot of studies out there around personalization in automotive, the need for more personalization in automotive, and the impact of personalization um, when, when bringing that into the automotive space. And you can see some really great data that kind of backs that up. The second piece is kind of what we're moving into as an industry, which is more of a, I want to start the deal online type of, uh, type of situation, kind of throwing around the, the buzz phrase digital retailing, right? 
And you know, when you look at all these elements where car shoppers want to come in and start the deal before they go into, into your store, uh, what is that actual first step? The first step is creating merchandising that really grabs their eyeballs and creates that engagement and maximizes that opportunity for them to take the next step to kind of structure that deal, secure financing um, before moving into the store. Because what we see is the personalization that you're doing online and starting that process, you're still very essential as a dealership to completing that. And the car shoppers think that. They want to go and they want to complete that, that sale at your store and still value your input and consultation into making the right decisions. But it all starts with merchandising and thinking about who you're targeting with that inventory. And as we move into a more digital world where we're doing more of these things online, you have to be able to kind of make that impact uh, with different media, with more compelling media. And that got me thinking about more than just photos and more than just video. That got me into thinking, okay, what else is coming out there? I'm seeing a lot of great technology providers coming in with 360 spin technology, which is an example of what I'm showing here. New technology, it's here now. There's hundreds of dealerships using it, using it across the country, uh, but it's going to become more and more, especially as we want to do personalized, immersive experiences. As you can kind of spin the car as a car shopper, maybe zoom into specific features, that's a very personalized, engaging experience. But again, I want to quantify the impact of interactive photos of the vehicle or 360. So here's another consumer study we ran last year. We looked at What's the importance of interactive content for you to make the next step as a car shopper, right? And you see a lot of the usual suspects show up, right? You see vehicle-specific photos. Uh, you know, those are still king. You look at kind of the lack of engagement in stock photos. You got vehicle descriptions scoring lower. That's more like it's because it's, it's a me too. You got photos and descriptions. Those need to go together. But the two there in green are interesting, right? You got a video of the vehicle. Video has been around forever. It continues to kind of make an impact. Um, in that same uh, Power of Pictures case study, vehicles with video get 19% more VDP views than vehicles without video. So just something to keep in mind there. But interactive photos of the vehicle, 61% said that was very important to taking the next step. And that talked a lot about 360. And to further quantify that, I wanted to go and you know, talk to great providers like Dealer On and um, you know, car shoppers and say, how do we want to display 360s on a website, right? How do consumers want to engage to make that really strong impact? And you can see kind of some data here that says 87% want to view all the angles of the car versus individual photos. They like switching between the 360 vehicle using a, a spin on the search results page. Really powerful for your website because you have all the inventory there. Uh, that's your inventory. They're kind of in your environment, so something to think about there. Um, again, they like the search results page. They don't like that the vehicle spins automatically. They want to control the, the over-rotation of the 360 image, and they want to see it as big as possible. So just some things to go back and talk to your providers about out or have conversations with, with your staff about in terms of adopting 360 technology as a way to create that personalized immersive technology experience that's really going to push them to the next step, which is going to your dealership and completing that transaction. So kind of my last piece of data here today is something that I, I just luckily stumbled across at driving sales last year. And a company called Speedshift Media did a study and, and kind of wanted to say, are lead submissions the most important digital marketing metric? And we know there's a lot of metrics out there, and we've talked about a ton of them today. We've talked about search results pages and vehicle details pages. But what SpeedShift Media wanted to do was really quantify the impact of these different types of metrics and equating that to the more you interact with these different pieces, the closer the car is to selling. So you see they broke them out into really five different categories. Form submissions, leads, traditional leads. Media, that's photo, video, 360 media. Links, those are clicks into uh, you know, car facts or other information about the car. Our text and chat. And then social sharing. And all of these components are very, very important that you need to have on your website or you need to have integrated. Not saying they are or aren't, you need to have them all. But what they wanted to do was, over six months, look at over 100 dealers, 50,000 cars, and map every single click to one of these five categories. And the more the clicks happened, the closer the car is to selling. 
Do any five of those categories, can we make that correlation between engagement and, and, core, and kind of propensity to sell or likelihood to sell over the next day or two? And if you've been paying attention the entire webinar, you probably knew where this was going, but this is extremely interesting. They found that only media engagement increases in frequency the closer the vehicle is to its sale date. All of the others got engagement, but just because someone submits a lead doesn't mean they're close to selling. That's a really good piece of information to grab, but the more media engagement is going on, the more that correlates to someone coming in and shopping. And I am uh, you know, a living example of this. I bought a, a, a used car about a month ago, and I submitted a lead to get a test drive going um, about six weeks out before I actually went and I did it. I wanted to make that connection with the dealership. I wanted to interact with them, so the lead forms in the chat were really helpful for that. And I kind of travel a lot for my job, so I knew I wasn't going to be able to get there for a little bit, and I was also waiting to get the title back on the used car that I just paid off. But the, the closer I got to actually going in and test driving vehicles, I found myself looking at more videos and more photos of that inventory. So really interesting stuff. And this leads us to saying, if you aren't looking at BDPs as a metric, you should. That's happening now, so let's make sure we're doing that. But in the future, farther out, we want to start looking at tracking things deeper than just BDP clicks from a search results page. We want to start to look at media engagement, how much that is happening, and how that can start to help us understand what's working, what strategies to put in place. And also, you know, if a car is getting a lot of media engagement, do we want to drop the price? Do we want to move that car into the wholesale channel? These are new types of data points that we can use to um, make better decisions and drive profitable growth to the dealership. So besides my key takeaways, we have one more poll question. Eliana, you want to take it away? I do. Thank you. All right, last poll question, audience. We want to know, get your votes in. Do you currently use vehicle details pages, VDPs, and search results pages, SRPs, engagements, to track effectiveness of merchandising? We want to know. Please select one of the following. Yes, we do. No, we don't. We only use one of those two. You know what? We don't use those two, but we use different metrics entirely, or you have no idea. Hey, that's an answer up there, too. So we want to know, do you currently use VDP and search result engage I'm sorry, SRP engagements to track effectiveness of merchandising. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results and get your questions in because we're going to be finishing up this presentation soon, right, Russ? Yeah, we're yeah. all wrapped. We're pretty much wrapped. Pretty much wrapped. We're going to finish up this presentation soon. We're going to give away a prize, and then we're going to get to your questions, and we're going to see how we can help you further with your online merchandising strategies at your dealership, which, of course, as you've been hearing, the numbers are in. All that great stuff, if you improve your online merchandising, it's going to lead to more profits and more growth. That's what we want for all of you. All right. Now that we've gotten a majority of the votes in, wow. Wow. Wait till you see these answers. Okay. Russ, I'm going to close this poll. And let's share the results. Audience, thank you so much for your votes on this third and final poll question. Let's see. The question was, do you currently use vehicle detail page and search result page engagements to track effectiveness of merchandising? Okay, 44% of today's audience, that's a majority, said yes, they do. Awesome. But not far behind, 39% of today's audience say no, we don't. 6% say that they only use one of those out of the two. No one said they use different metrics entirely. And 11% of today's audience, they have no idea which, which metrics they're using to uh, track effectiveness of merchandising. Russ, what is the proper answer here? Is there an answer? I mean, should they be using both of those? They should. They should be using both. I think that, you know, we're in a place where, you know, my... my it's kind of a joke, but it's actually a good, a good saying. We're, we're swimming in the seas of SRPs. That's what I say. When you're out there advertising a car on a, on, a, on a classified site, there's a lot of different dealerships we're going up against. And we want to be able to track what kind of click rates we're getting and the amount of engagement we're getting on the inventory to make better decisions about merchandising in terms of 
photos, descriptions, pricing, um, things like that. So you definitely want to be tracking search results pages um, and how much you're showing up and then vehicle details pages, what the click-throughs look like. And how often would you do that? Would you do that every month, every six months, every year, year over year? What are you, what are you talking about here? I think best practices is you're, you're looking at that weekly. Weekly? Oh, Across my your goodness. Industry. Yeah. I mean, if you think about kind of the 30 or 30-day 30 or less turn kind of goal that we all try to strive to, uh, can't wait every month. you got to be adjusting strategies quicker than that. So weekly is my recommendation. Fair enough. All right. Great poll question. Thank you, audience, for our always taking part in our poll questions. We very much appreciate it. Russ? What else you got left for us today? Because you've already put out a lot of information. <laughs> I did. I did. And, and, th and thanks, Eliana. Thanks, everybody. I know that it is a lot, but there's a lot of things that are kind of evolving in our industry. And merchandising is really one of the key differentiators. And just some key takeaways from what we talked about today. We want to decrease speed to market. We want to enhance listings and, and make sure we understand engagement and traffic to VDPs. Moving forward, think more about marketing and merchandising around personalization and making sure you're in the spots that car shoppers are. This goes back to social media and Facebook marketplace. And then start thinking about merchandising as a driver and performance in in indicator moving forward. VDPs, photo engagement, all of those types of things. Because remember, less time to connect with car shoppers in market. And it's more important than ever to protect and increase your margins and profitability. So I hope I you know, gave you some information, some strategies to help you get there today. Um, I have some resources. All of the studies that I have referenced today are within the PDF that's attached with links to the studies. So you know, I, I encourage you to uh, take a look at those. And obviously, we can have a dialogue a little bit today. And then we can have it moving forward. You have my email, phone number, whatever you want. And then, you know, just some action items, kind of back to the key takeaways. Review, review your process. Think about photos. Are you waiting until reconditioning is completed? Do you know how long it takes you? It, it seems like we do. We, we do okay in the poll question around knowing how long it takes, but is that good enough? Do we need to drive it down based off the information we saw today? Are we thinking about personalized merchandising? And then back to the question earlier, are we using SRP, VDP metrics when measuring merchandising effectiveness? That's where we're at. That's we're where we're at. All right. I love it. All right. Take a drink because you have been talking a lot, Russ. You did an excellent job. Phenomenal presentation. Audience, do you have questions for Russ Daniels from HomeNet? He's the guy to ask when you're looking for merchandising strategies. So get those questions in. We're going to be getting to the Q&A session in just a moment. Before we do that, I do want to direct your attention over to the handouts section of the GoToWebinar interface. In the handouts section, which is kind of, if you look at the GoToWebinar interface, it's almost at the bottom, almost, uh, I think, on everyone's uh, interface. So look for the word that says handouts and there's a little triangle next to it. So what you want to do is click on that triangle. It'll open up and in there you're going to find one great handout for you to download immediately right now through the interface and it's available to you until the end of this broadcast. So please take a moment to download today's slide deck. It has a lot of information in it. And if for whatever reason you are having trouble or difficulty getting that download, that's all right. Email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com, and I'll send it to you, all right? Now, <laughs> I'm very excited. Okay, Russ, whenever you get a moment, you can turn on your webcam now, because we're going to, um, and also you can start humming game show music if you have any. Um, we're <laughs> going to tell the audience, that's right, it's that time. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, well, I announced that our good friends over at HomeNet, they're giving away a great prize on today's webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a huge HomeNet swag bag filled with all kinds of HomeNet awesomeness. That's right, there might be t-shirts, pens, papers, mouse pads. You don't know what you're going to get in the the home net swag bag but believe me you're gonna want it all you have to do is saunter over to your keyboard get ready first one to write in the correct response to our giveaway question is gonna be winning this awesome prize today now before we get started on the giveaway question I do wanna let our vendors on the show know we love having you on our dealer on webinars but we are gonna ask you to kindly sit this out as this prize is intended for dealership personnel only we do love having you here though thank you so much and I hope you got a lot out of today's presentation now audience 
This is a very hard question. I'm not going to lie. So unless you took exquisite notes, you may have to guess. And if you have to guess, you may have to guess more than once. I'm A-OK -okay with all of that. Guess more than once, all right? Because I really want to give this prize away. So make sure you get those guesses in. And good luck, everyone. <laughs> According to Cox Automotive Research, for multiple photos versus a stock photo on used and certified pre-owned cars, how much has the average VDP listing increased from 2017 to 2018? And just so you know, no one got the answer right, so keep throwing some numbers at me. I'll read the question again, still no one has gotten it right. According to Cox Automotive Research, for multiple photos, versus a stock photo on used and certified pre-owned cars, how much has the average VDP listing increased from 2017 to 2018? <laughs> nope, no one got it right. They are all guessing. No, it's not days. Keep going. We're looking, we are looking for a percentage. I'm just going to scroll up just to make sure I didn't miss a winner. Nope, no one got it yet. Keep guessing every, ooh, wait a minute. Oh, we have a winner. <laughs> well, audience, only one of you people got it correct. It was Devon Rajkumar, no stranger to winning a, a prize on the Dealer on Webinar. And the correct answer that we were looking for was 87%. Congratulations, Devon Rajkumar. Good job, Devon. <laughs> Raj Kumar. I know I should know your dealership name by now, but of course I keep forgetting. So please, please send me all of your dealership information as well as your mailing address so I can give you a proper congratulations. Yes. Um, to once again reiterate, according to Cox Automotive Research, for multiple photos versus a stock photo on used and certified pre-owned cars, how much has the average VDP listing increased from 2017 to 2018? 87%. Congratulations, Devon Raj Kumar. Now, everyone else, I know you're not Devon Raj Kumar, Digital Marketing Manager from Dan Van Dusen Chevrolet Buick GMC in Ontario, Canada. I know. I'm not either. So none of us won a prize except for him. But you know what? It's okay. We give away cool prizes every week here on the Dealer on Webinar series. So come on back to another Dealer on Webinar. And that might be your lucky day. You win a great prize on the Dealer on Webinar. But for right now, Devon Rajkumar is our big winner. And of course, we got to say thank you to our good friends over at HomeNet for their incredible generosity. So thank you very much. All right. If you're ready, let's go to the next slide and let's ask you some questions Russ you ready I'm ready all right let's see what we have here first question came in nice and early from Drew Drew says hi Russ does HomeNet have the capability to have an overlay like that one that was shown when there is 10 or less photos for a vehicle and can it be automated well first hi Drew hi back <laughs> at you and, and good question and um, you know, obviously, I, I want to talk m mainly today about you know overarching strategies, kind of technology and provider agnostic about about merchandising. But since you asked that question, um, the answer is yes, yes. HomeNet does have that capability um, to create an overlay based on days, based on number of photos, and automate that process. Drew, if you have a follow-up question, we'd love to get it. So please send it in. Thank you so much for the great question. Okay. Just um, a few more questions, and then we're going to be closing out the show, all right? So, audience, thank you for your patience. I know we're a little bit over time, but you're doing great. Okay, here we go. Next question is from Justin. Justin says, hey, I came in late. I apologize if this was already addressed. But what is the best call to action on a VDP page? We used Get ePrice, but the Internet price is our best price, and I feel that was not transparent to our customers. So we tried check availability for two months, and lead submissions went down. We're now back to get ePrice, and lead submissions are going back up. Do you have a recommendation on a transparent call to action that will not hurt lead submissions, but will make them go up? Russ, do you have any information on calls to action? That's interesting, Justin. Um, thinking about it, I mean, 
try to answer the question. Hopefully, hopefully it helps you guide in the right direction. I think that kind of touting market-based pricing to the consumer in a way the consumer understands is a way I would approach that. So to know that you are kind of the you know the best price in town or you know you're 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 pricing it you know pricing it to sell um, using market-based pricing and not kind of saying e-price being more specific about you know best price in the area or um, you know below the average price or right at average price that provides that transparency to car shoppers that are looking for that kind of immediate engagement um, you know, as opposed to wanting to do some extra clicks to kind of figure it all out. So I would say the, the fairest you price it and the, the way that you tell that you did price it fairly um, is a way that I would, I would attack that problem. Thank you so much. All right, great question, Justin. If you have a follow-up question, we would let, oh, uh, he says, thank you, Russ. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Follow-up questions are always welcome as well. So thank you. Okay, next question. Now, this is an interesting one from my friend Joey. How you doing? Joey says, hey, if we use the first image backgrounded and the rest of the exteriors just as they are, is that still impactful or did you not do research on that? <laughs> yeah, Joey, yeah, we, we did. And it does make an impact. I think that first photo really kind of grabs that search results page into that vehicle details page click. And then the rest of the photo stream can go back to the dealership. If you want a background more than the first photo, that creates that consistent experience. But what you've done by putting the backgrounded photo in is you're increasing engagement from that list page into that vehicle details page. And you're kind of in, in enhancing the listing. You're putting a little bit more um, energy on that initial click, kind of the, the riboflavin of the listing, if you will, Eliana. <laughs> Is that so? All right. Well, I use it. I use the word. I love in the some more riboflavin. All right. So, Joey, thank you so much for the great question. He says thanks, by the way. Thank All you. right. Just another couple questions, and then we'll close out the show. Um, Michael says, hey, do you have any extra riboflavin that can help us capture more form submissions or leads? Anything else that maybe you didn't address? Anything else? You know, <laughs> I know we, we just talked about CTAs, which you didn't address in, in your presentation. So yeah. I'm just curious if there's anything else, maybe any other juice we might have missed. I, I, yeah, I think I covered most of the, mer like the core kind of visual merchandising elements. Mm -hmm. Back to Justin's question, I think that um, I, I could have talked more about, and, and we do in other webinars across Cox Automotive, on market-based pricing driving lead submissions by being the best price, by pricing to turn the inventory. Um, you know, that's, that's one thing that I, I didn't touch on too much. You can see it when you pull the PDF up, uh, that you can see multiple photos with a price versus multiple photos without a price. And you can see the VDP increases uh, go up for multiple photos with price. So I would say think about market-based pricing. I didn't touch on that a lot today, but that's another thing I would add on. Okay, there you go. Michael, thank you so much. Always great questions from you. Okay, Drew wrote back in. He did have a follow-up question for us. He says, do people just manage tracking time to fully merchandise used vehicles manually, or does HomeNet have a report for this? <laughs> Trying to automate it. I like where you're going with this, Drew. All right, so what's the easiest way to track time to online merchandising for a car, for a dealership. I like where you're going too, Drew. I like that as well. <laughs> Is um, that something you're going to develop for us then? <laughs> so it's something that's done manual today, and it's something that, you know, at the, the team in HomeNet back in Philadelphia is working on a way to automate that. So I'll say wow. working on it, and there's going to be more to come. Wow, now that's some exciting news. All right, Drew, look at you. Forward-thinking Drew, getting us all on the same page, and Russ, Always so good to have you here. Boy, you really brought the fire today. That was a lot of information. It was so funny because when when I saw the answer to the giveaway question come up, I was thinking, oh, my God, he gave so much information. There's no way. I'm thinking, I'm so glad somebody got it. <laughs> That was a lot of information. <laughs> Vaughn got it. Um, okay, you know what? We did have another question that just snuck in. Okay, let's see if we can hit this one head on. Michael wrote in, how does the newest merchandising or sale entity called Corvana 
merchandise online. I don't know if you know anything about Corvana or if it's even something you can even comment on, Russ. Um, Carvana? Is that what we're talking he said, about? He said Corvana, but it must be Carvana, yes. Don't know much about Corvana to comment on. Um, <laughs> Carvana, they, they leverage something I talked about in terms of a trend that's emerging across the board, and they're leveraging 360 kind of immersive interactive technology. Um, to, to, they've been doing that for a little while now, and that's increasing engagement. Um, so that's one thing that they do that was from the presentation. Okay, um, and and he says Carvana, yes. All right, thank you, Russ. Thank you so much for taking that last question that snuck in. I appreciate it. Um, phenomenal presentation, audience. If you need to get a hold of Russ, look, his his information is on the screen, and as you can see, he is extremely knowledgeable and incredibly personable. So if you want some more information about how. He and HomeNet could help you sell more cars through your online merchandising strategies. Get in touch with him. He would love to help you. Isn't that right, Russ? That's right. Of course. That's right. All right. Love I, want to, it. I want to remind the audience, a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is also going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. Feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And today's webinar recording is also going to be posted online within 24 hours. All you have to do is go to dealeron.com slash webinar. And from there, you can see our upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars too. And at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey. People, it is three questions. Come on now. Please fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. We want to know what you thought of today's presentation. I thought it was great. But guess what? They want to hear what you thought. So let's get together. Let's get those three questions answered. It really helps us out. And earlier in the presentation, I told you all that we have a webinar exclusive special offer for you. So if you are a Honda, Chevy, or a Toyota dealer, you can save almost $5,000 a year on the industry's best SEO. It's great, right? All you have to do is check yes at the end of the webinar in the survey. Yes, we have a question for that. And we're going to make some magic happen for you. So remember, it's a webinar-only exclusive offer for Honda, Chevy, and Toyota dealers. We hope you'll say yes. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next Dealer On webinar. That's right. How to use artificial intelligence for maximum results. Woo, this is an interesting topic. At this year's 2018 NADA show, nearly everywhere you heard of companies com proclaiming the use of artificial intelligence. The temptation for dealers is to turn over critical communications to software-driven tools that will match, beat, or replace human employees. Well, that's simply inaccurate. Progressive dealers use a combination of both AI, artificial intelligence, and HI, human intelligence, to deliver exceptional results. Do you want to know how to use artificial intelligence for exceptional results? Of course you do. In this brilliant one-hour webinar, David Kane will lead you through the strategy and convince you of the incredible benefits to using AI with HI. Fueled by the abundance of data and ever-increasing customer expectations, AI now has far more practical applications within a dealership business model. When properly utilized, AI will amplify your business and products, improve customer experience, dramatically increase productivity, and even lower your costs. Wow! You owe it to your dealership to find out how artificial intelligence can boost your bottom line. The future? It's now. Are you ready to learn how to use artificial intelligence for maximum results? Then you can't afford to miss this next presentation. Register now. And don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held Thursdays, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding our webinars and our topics, well, I'd love to hear from you. My name is Eliana Raggio. You can find me everywhere online. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. I'm on all the automotive social networks. Or you know what? You can just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Don't be shy. I love hearing from you. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. And I hope to see you all on another webinar in our continuing education series. Take care, everyone, and enjoy the holiday weekend. Be safe.